Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. I'm your host, Terry. So, uh, still coming to you from Pennsylvania. Still coming to you on September 11th, but I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make another video talk about a couple of things. So, um, it's Trucker Appreciation Week, and we'll get to that in a minute. But I wanted to, uh, I wanted to share with you a couple of pieces of bad news that I read recently about Werner. And um, everybody knows who Werner is. They're based in Omaha, Nebraska. They're a huge company, publicly traded at that. So one piece of bad news that I think they got the other day, although they kind of played it off, was they bought a company called ECM. And ECM, and I don't, I don't know how long ago they purchased it, but ECM is kind of a, um, they're kind of a regional company, and um, and they also, mo you know, whenever I see their trucks, it's almost always like day cabs. Um, that's the type of stuff they you they do. I don't know that they're an LTL company. They're just shorter haul. Um, but anyway, ECM, some people at one of their facilities just voted to affiliate with the Teamsters Union. And, um, you know, so that's going to be interesting because obviously Werner is not a, uh, Werner is not a, um, a union company. And the other piece of bad news that they got, um, although it's, it's bad, but it's good, is they, um, they just got slapped with a $36 million punitive damages judgment in addition to compensatory damages in a lawsuit brought by the U.S. Equal Opportunity Commission on behalf of a deaf person. Now, the interesting, and, and so the crux of the case is, hey, this guy's deaf, you need to give him a reasonable accommodation to be a truck driver. And, you know, Werner was like, no, we can't, <laughs> we don't want to accommodate a deaf person. And, and you know, at first blush, you're like, well, duh, we're truck drivers. We need to be able to hear. Although you, I honestly don't know how a lot of truck drivers pass the physical, but that's a different kettle of fish. But here's the thing that happened with this guy's case. And I'm, I apologize, I don't know his name. And this was in federal court in Omaha. But this guy went to a Werner, you know, on at the behest of Werner, went to one of their truck driving schools so as you may know some companies they don't they don't do it in-house per se but they send you to a school that they you know essentially control and you pay for the school and you're on the hook for that money but then um then you know there's a way to work it off with you know with werner payroll deduction whatever it is right but I, but I think what happened is this guy was basically like told, hey, if you pass the CDL school, you got a job. And then they refused to hire him. Now, you know, the interesting thing is, is that in a lot of states, I, although I don't know that it's all of them, you have to have already passed a physical in order to test to get your CDL permit. So... Um, I'm not sure, and, and I, and I definitely believe that you could not take the CDL road exam, the practical exam, without having passed the physical, because theoretically you're not even supposed to be behind the wheel if you haven't passed the physical. So this guy must have passed the physical um, in order to do the road test and get a CDL. Um, and, you know, he's deaf, but I think he just probably has hearing aids, right? So it's, it's, like, it's like not having 20-20 vision, right? It's correctable. So unfortunately, or fortunately for, for Werner, the maximum award in this case can be like, I think, 300 grand. So that 36 million was just a statement by the jury saying, hey, and... and 
and you know, basically, hey, you told this dude he could have a job. He relied on what you said, and then you and you knew what his situation was, and then you turned around and de denied him a job because you said you shouldn't have to accommodate him. And then, of course, Werner, you know, made some lame ass statement about how they're committed to safety, yada yada, right? So anyway, that's that's uh, how how things are going at Werner. Um, <coughs> oh, and the other thing is one of their drivers did a hit and run on my friend Paul's truck. You guys saw that video. So that's three things right there. I think Werner should be on the naughty list for Christmas. Um, okay, so wanted to talk about, I, I just happened to call my fleet manager today. And, and if you work at Prime, you know that on Mondays, if you call and you get put on neglect, I mean, get on, put on hold, um, you're gonna hear a message from the safety department that usually talks about um, the previous week's safety meeting. And that's exactly what I got. And, you know, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes I just think people don't think through things. And let me say this at the outset. Prime, it has provided to all of its drivers, because I already saw it show up in my account because it's Driver Appreciation Week. They've provided um, $70 worth of Prime points. And, you know, what they are, if if you don't know, is that you can use them at a terminal, you can use them in the Prime stores, you can use them um, to get food and stuff like that. I don't know if like the salons take Prime points, I kind of think they don't. Um, and I don't know about like say, fire and ice or some, I don't, I don't think they do. Um, but anyway, $70 worth of Prime points. And like I've said before, the store is subsidized, so it's not a you know it's not a bad thing, right? Like you can get stuff you need. Um, so it's a nice little gift, um, and you know if you do the math, it's it's a pretty substantial amount of of money. Um, but if you have Prime points, don't leave the company because uh, the second you tell them you're leaving, they like kank the card and stuff that you would use to get your points. But Getting back to the safety message, so, you know, they, they were talking, you know, the person that was given it was kind of, you know, it, it was a lot of hyperbole, and I'm like, you know, they're like, you know, all the people that don't drive trucks at Prime have a keen awareness, and keen is the word they used, awareness of what you guys do on the road and, and stuff like that, and I'm like, you know what, bro? I just don't get that feeling. I mean, people might know. I just think they might just disregard it. Um, and, you know, we call this everyday heroes, blah, blah, blah. Again, hyperbole, right? We're not heroes. We're not, and I don't even know what an everyday hero is compared to a once in a lifetime hero, but I'm not a hero. I, I just do what I like to do and, and I want to get paid filthy lucre, okay? Um, I'm not running a charity, you know. I, I like what this job affords me um, in terms of freedom and stuff like that, right? And so, you know, calling me a hero doesn't really make me feel good. It makes me feel like you just think I want to hear that because you really don't know what matters to me. And, um, you know, the, then, then this person went on to talk about, you know, it's winter time is coming. And, and I got to tell you, see this, <laughs> what they said really kind of speaks volumes. And, and, and so they, they reminded everybody that the chain laws are in effect in Colorado, east of, or west of Denver. You know, you gotta carry chains on your truck after September 1st, blah, blah, blah. That's cool, right? Good reminder. And, but then they said, hey, 
next time you're home or you, you know you stop by your house or whatever you want to get prepared for winter you know you want to get like um, a warm jacket and socks and maybe an extra blanket and and boots and, and you know since it and then this was even more bizarre then they're like and since it's winter steel toed boots I'm like who the F wants to wear steel toed boots in the winter time I mean you wear steel toed boots to protect your toes not so you can get that freaking steel plate really nice and cold so it can make your feet even more numb okay you wear steel toes for a specific reason but it's not for cold it doesn't keep your feet warm trust me on that <coughs> but the, the whole like you know the whole vibe of that was like it, it I, I felt like it was like your kid you know is in kindergarten and yesterday it was really warm but this morning a you know overnight a cold front moved in and now it's 38 degrees outside and you're like hey Jimmy um, you're gonna have to put a coat on at least a hoodie cuz it's cold it's gonna get warm later but you're gonna be freezing your little booty off waiting for the bus right that's what it felt like and I was like you know stop talking down to freaking adults right you trust somebody with you know, a two, $250,000 worth of equipment and cargo or more, you trust them to like not cause a wreck that gets your company sued for like a gazillion dollars, right? You trust them to do all sorts of stuff, but then you talk to them like they're a freaking five-year-old. And, and really, the, it, it, it is, look, I was I trained recruits in the military. I know you got to take you got to take care of your people, right? Like I would always make sure my recruits had certain uniform items, but it's not because I cared if they were cold. Cuz if they forgot a coat and it was uniform of the day and they're freezing, I really didn't care cuz I treat them like, you know, grown ass men. But I would do something only because I don't want some kind of deficiency against my company because one of my freaking knucklehead recruits is out of uniform on the street. But that's that's the only reason, right? Like you, you take care of your people, but don't assume that they're freaking infantile. Don't assume that they're not smart enough to go, hey, you know, it's, it's 22 degrees outside. Uh, I'm just going to continue wearing a t-shirt and shorts and, and chucks because you know, even though it's snowing, no one at Prime told me I should wear a hat and gloves and a jacket and put long pants on. I mean, stop doing stuff like that. It's, it's, it's unwelcome and it's condescending, you know? Like, I, I wonder if those same people would want me to come over to their house and do a safety inspection and go, hey, you know, that, that extension cord's frayed. Uh, these stairs, the rise and run on them is really outdated. You need to redo it to get it into code. I mean, we're all adults here. And if you don't think somebody's smart enough to like wear the right clothing in the wintertime, then don't hire them to begin with, okay? And look, I know you see some of these Ethiopian dudes out there in like, you know, slides and track pants in the middle of Wyoming in the wintertime freezing their asses off but that's because no like they've only been here a couple of weeks and they're driving for some fly-by-night company and no one said anything to them I mean I carry some heavy clothing all the time why because I might have to go into a building and be in there for a while that's 30 degrees, right? Because we carry a refrigerated product. Like I was in my trailer this morning to put a load bar in there, but the reefer's running because I still have to deliver the rest of the load. So the trailer's 26 degrees. If I had to be in there at any length of time and like restack stuff, in addition to my gloves, I probably would have grabbed a hoodie just so I didn't get too cold while I was working. But come on man just just stop okay just stop baby you know it's not even it is babysitting it is kind of micromanaging but it's also insulting 
And I don't know if they intend to be insulting, but oftentimes they are. And, you know, and I think probably they wouldn't like to be talked to like that. Like, hey, you know, like call them up in the morning. Hey, um, are you on your computer? Because if not, there's this thing called a power strip and it'll probably have like this little orange switch. You gotta have it in the on position or the computer itself won't get power or your monitor or anything. So if you if you're not able to get booted up, that's why. You know, I mean, they would be like, what are you talking about? So anyway, you get my point. Um, happy uh, Trucker Appreciation Week. Um, I, I don't know if there's other specials out there or whatever. I And by the way, I do appreciate the prime points. I will use them for something beneficial. I appreciate them. Um, if your company doesn't do something like that for you, I know when I was at night, night had lunch and br breakfast and lunch and sometimes dinner brought in, like, I, I want to say catered, but um, during the entire week. So, like, every freaking day I was like, all right, what terminal can I get to today? Because they would always have good stuff. Like, it, it wouldn't be like some ratty-ass pizza joint. It would be you know, like name brand, like, you know, sometimes they'd have Jimmy John's, sometimes they'd have, you know, um, you know, like El Pollo Loco, um, they'd have pizza from, you know, like good places or whatever, and they'd have break, they'd always have donuts and, and breakfast sandwiches and stuff like that, so, um, I know they did that, I don't know what other companies do, I mean, I figure they should do something right or like just cancel the week. Um, but I do appreciate the prime points. So anyway, oh, one more thing, one more thing. So, you know, earlier I talked about 9-11, right? And I talked about a book and everything. And somebody commented, oh, well, what about World Trade Center number seven? That had to be a controlled demolition. And for those of you that don't remember, World Trade Center number seven was an ancillary building that was caught on fire um, during the attacks and the fire was actually in diesel fuel tanks that were designed to run backup generators for the city's emergency operations center. Now, there was a controversy that they even put the operations center at the World Trade Center, even though it wasn't in one of the two towers, it was in a, a you know, it was in a high rise, but like 45, 50 stories, right? But there was controversy because Giuliani had decided to put it there and people were like, hey, are you really sure you want this at the down at the World Trade Center site? Given that in 93, somebody blew up a van, well, not somebody, uh, you know, Al Qaeda operatives, blew up a van in the basement of the World Trade Center trying to knock the buildings down, right? It's like, hey, do you really want um, your emergency operations center to be like right next to the place that's like the biggest target in the world for these terrorists? But anyway, they put it there, but there were giant fuel tanks. And here's what happened. And if you, by the way, if you read that book that I was recommending, It'll detail all of the things that happened because also, uh, you know, every building that was labeled a WTC building, so WTC 1, 2, um, 3, all, all of the World Trade Center labeled buildings were destroyed that day because there was a Marriott Hotel that was considered like World Trade Center number 4 that was on the west side of the Twin Towers, that building was destroyed because when the towers collapsed. But here's what was going on. When the towers collapsed, right, you saw the video, crap went everywhere, including giant steel beams, which pierced through because a lot of people don't realize that the Trade Center, underneath the Trade Center were, were, were shopping malls uh, the PATH train and subway tunnels run through there. 
all of that stuff was destroyed when the towers came down because steel beams just pierced through the concourse level and down, you know, well into the bowels of that whole complex, including where the fuel tanks were for World Trade Center number seven. But here's here's what I want to say about conspiracy theories, okay? And I've said that, I, I think I've said this before. Conspiracies are really, really, really hard to keep secret, okay? Really hard. Um, the mafia couldn't keep itself secret, right? Um, a lot of the nefarious things that the U.S. government has done over the years have been outed by whistleblowers, okay? Look at Daniel. If you don't know who Daniel Ellsberg is, you should look him up. He died recently, actually. He, he exposed, he worked for the Rand Corporation, like he was a contractor to the DOD. He exposed all the lies about Vietnam. Actually, so did um, so did um, Vice Admiral Stockdale, if you ever read his book, he talked about the Tonkin Gulf incident, and he was like, yeah, it was a nothing burger, it was, it was made up. But look at Edward Snowden, right? Like, there's always gonna be somebody ratting somebody out for profit, for ethical reasons, there's always gonna be somebody ratting it out. And so if the World Trade Center destruction and all those deaths there, all the deaths at the Pentagon, all the deaths over there in that field in Pennsylvania, if that was all of it as a result of a conspiracy, it's gotta be the most, the best kept secret in the history of mankind. Why? Because thousands and thousands of people would have had to participate in it, right? Thousands of people would have had to participate in it. And it's really hard to keep secrets like that. Somebody will, somebody will reveal it somehow, some way. On their deathbed, you know, it, it always comes out, right? The truth, and I, I, I've said this to people in the past, the truth is like water. Sometimes it seeps out. Sometimes it's just drip by drip by drip by drip. Sometimes it's a freaking flash flood, like everything at once. Sometimes it's, you know, it's the broken 24 inch water main in the middle of a big city, you know? And everybody's like, what, there was a water main there? Well, not, yep, now because the street's flooded. That's what the truth is like. It's like water, it always comes out. And, you know, and, and, and the thing is, right, like it's always there. And there's no way that 9-11 was an inside job. Because if it was, then that means Bin Laden and, and all those guys that were on those planes. I mean, think about it. You'd have to have air, two major airlines involved in the conspiracy, right? Not, not for the planes but just to say that certain people were on a plane, all these people would have to vanish. Anyway, you, you know where I'm going with this. Just, if you're, if you're a conspiracy theorist, keep it to yourself. Because, you know, I, I don't really want to deal with it. Like, and, and I think, I would love to be a guy that exposed a conspiracy. Like, I, I would even do it at the risk of my life because I would want to be in the history books. I would want to be that guy to be like, there's this dude, he had a channel called Tim Travels and he blew it open. He blew it open. He was the only guy with courage to do it. He blew it open. He rat, He was the Joe Valachi of whatever the conspiracy is. And by the way, if you don't know who Joe Valachi is, there is this book called the Valachi Papers and Joe Valachi was a mafia member. And he basically was the first person to ever admit to Congress, by the way, in sworn testimony, that the mafia even existed, that the, the existence of the American Costa Nostra. So, I mean, look, these guys had, you know, they knew that if they said anything, they could be killed in an instant. And yet people still talked all the time. That's why we have a witness protection program so that people that are in conspiracies can out the conspiracies and justice can be served 
and the truth keeps flowing on. So anyway, talk to you later. Bye.